Hey everybody, it's Jeff. Hey, I got a quick video for you. Today I'm getting ready to install a battery maintainer on my John Deere 4720. I did a little research on this and um, there's a lot of different battery maintainers that you can use. And I almost bought the John Deere one because I thought, you know, hey, I'll support John Deere. But I also found one, it's a Schumacher, which is identical to the John Deere uh, battery maintainer. Uh, the 3 amp version and it's a little cheaper so just to let you know if you're looking for a battery maintainer um, the Schumacher 3 amp uh, battery maintainer is going to be just like the TY 27265 I think it's the number for the 3 amp version and um, it's going to do the same thing it looks identical to it other than not having the John Deere emblem on it so um, let me uh, give you a picture of that and you can kind of see the box I'll give you the model number and we'll just go through the steps real quick. I'm just gonna hook it straight up to the battery and uh, run my plug down underneath where I can just plug into it all winter long. So um, I had some problems last year with the battery running down and uh, this year I'm not gonna have that problem. So let me share the installation with you. All right, everyone, I'm back and I apologize, but my battery went dead and I found out that the Schumacher charger, the battery terminal would not fit my battery. They need to be bigger. So I came back into the barn and, um, and I'm going to show you what I did to make that work. But I also wanted to show you the, uh, the battery charger that I purchased was the Schumacher. Uh, it's just a, a 3 amp maintainer and um, it's model SP1297. Uh, now this identical charger in the John Deere version is exactly the same other than having the John Deere emblem. And I bought this off of Amazon, um, this one for $39. And uh, John Deere won $69 for theirs. So uh, it looks identical to it. And I've got actually have it hooked up now. Um, but I'm going to show you something that I did to make the change. I added some length of wire. And then I'll do another video of what it looks like on the tractor. Okay, so a couple things to remember is that your Schumacher charger has a black wire with a white stripe for your hot and just a plain black wire for your negative. This is the ring eyelet terminal that came with the Schumacher and the hole here is just way too small. It's not going to fit most battery posts. In fact, it was one of the, uh, the most uh, negative comments about the reviews on the Schumacher 3 amp charger. So what I am doing is I'm going to show you just what I did on, on my fittings. I just used a bigger uh, eyelet, but I'm going to show you a couple things. I actually took off this yellow coating for two reasons. One, because uh, mainly because I can use shrink tube fittings and um, heat shrink this uh, to make a nice tight connection, but I did it twice, not once. So let me show you this. I use these heat shrink connections with solder in the middle, as you can see right there. You have to push the wire in from each end until it hits that solder, and then you heat it up. That solder melts and it shrinks the rest. I don't still trust that, so I still continue to go ahead and use a heat shrink over the top of that as well, which I will show you. One of the things that you have to remember, and this is just a a dummy connection but it looks just like the Schumacher remember that if you do what I'm doing the part that's inside here the male end or your female end will be your your hot and the reason why is you don't want this to be your hot and then set something metal if you happen to unplug or something because you're going to short something out so remember that that's important the other thing I have is is this tac life it's a mini hot air gun that I used to use for the heat shrink and it works great. I used to use a torch, but it tends to get too hot and it melts. So, all right. So now we're going to pretend <clears throat> that I'm working on this uh, wiring harness for the Schumacher battery maintainer. This is going to be our hot wire. Let's just say this is the black with the white and then I'm adding the extension, which I did. I added six inches to the, uh, to the length of this. So that way I could run it underneath the tractor and then use it for, um, or just make it easy to plug in and out. So right now what I have 
I've got both wires pushed in. I've got my insulation in just a little bit here and my insulation in just a little bit here. This blue ring is kind of a weather tight connection. So, turn my heater on. And it will melt that solder as well as shrink the tubing. Okay, so now I've got this a soldered connection, heat shrinked, but I'm going to add another piece of heat shrink over the top of that. What that does, it adds for more stability and um, in the long run, kind of helps protect that from ever pulling apart. Um, if the case may be where you might have something that, I don't know, if it touches or uh, if it's hanging loosely and rubs up against something all the time or if you're traveling down the road and it's whipping in the wind and can kind of create a loose connection. So, put this heat shrink over it and I'll heat shrink it again. And you can buy this heat shrink at any automotive store. But this little heat gun is great for this. And there you have it. It's completely heat shrink. Okay, so now what I have is I have this ring connector, battery terminal for the battery terminal, and I have stripped my red wire. Now one of the things that I like to do is I like to fold this over. It gives a little bit more girth for when I crimp this wire connection on there. Now you can see I stripped the yellow insulation off of this. The reason why is is because when you go to put your heat shrink tubing on, uh, it makes, makes a nicer connection. But here's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to heat shrink it once, but I'm going to heat shrink it twice because it gives it that extra protection of when this wire is bending, say, after I've connected this, every time this bends, it just kind of gives it more support. Okay. So now I got my two pieces of heat shrink tubing on there. You must do that first before you add your crimp on there because once you put this crimp on there you will not get that over. We'll crimp this. It's good and tight. I'll do my first shrink tube over the top of it, just like that. You always want to start at one end and work your way to the other end, otherwise you'll have a bubble in your heat shrink. And there you have it. So it's one. I pull up another one, and all this is is just for support. It's all it's going to do. It's just going to keep it from breaking on you, because sometimes when you crimp these battery connections on, they'll wear out over time, especially if you're taking them on and off or whatever, and they'll break on you. 
this heat shrink will add that stability and you won't have to worry about it. You kind of see how this has a little flare on this end of this heat gun, which makes it nice. It kind of redirects the heat all the way around the shrink wrap. And there you go. So this is exactly what I did on the Schumacher uh, battery charger. I just lengthened it about six inches, cut off the ends that came stock because obviously they're not going to fit on the battery terminal. Made a larger one, and uh, and it's heat shrinked it. Now it looks looks nice. It looks almost like it came from the factory that way. So my next step is going to be to show you how I actually installed it on the tractor. And um, all I did was drill a hole through the framework and. Um, I used some wire loom, the plastic wire loom protector in that hole as well as a grommet and you'll see that when I show you. But uh, anyway, um, you know a couple things that you have to change. Sometimes you just have to go through that whole process to make something work that you purchase. Um, not that I wanted to cut that cord and was kind of hoping that this would have a bigger eyelet on the end of it to fit over my battery terminal, but uh, sometimes you just got to do what you got to do. So anyway, um, I will come back to you and show you the next video on what it looks like on the tractor installed. So to wrap this up, I'm going to show you exactly where I placed my extension cord for the battery tender, the connection to the battery, and then how I ran it through the framework of the 4720. And the easy, easy project, this is a, a great way to just kind of foolproof during the winter months that you don't have to worry about your battery going dead, especially if you don't use it very often. And uh, and it keeps you from having to buy batteries all the time. So anyway, uh, highly recommend doing it this way. Uh, and uh, that way you're not having to, to take the battery off, bring it in, or, um, or try to mess with your jumper cables. This is just a hard wire connection and uh, it'll work great. What you can see is right here. So half inch drilled hole grommet that has a half inch ID. And then it allows me to have my pigtail hanging out uh, this does have a dust cover, I just don't have it on there, but it uh, <clears throat> allows me to plug this in at any point in time uh, during the winter months for uh, charging this battery. Well, that wraps up this video on installing the battery tender on the 4720, and it can happen on any other pieces of equipment that has a battery. Four-wheelers, tractors, lawn garden tractors, whatever. Um, it's highly recommended because it saves your battery's life. Um, I did this on my garden tractor where I was replacing the battery every one to two years and um, I was just tired of it. So kind of checked in on the battery tenders and it's definitely worth the money. Hey, I, I don't want you to forget we have something big going on this summer here on the property. It is here on the property, but we're not going to give it away yet. So what we need you to do is we need you to subscribe, like, and, and check mark that bell so that way when we do get new videos, you'll see what's coming up. I think you'll like it. Uh, we've been kind of planning on this for a long time. So anyway, just kind of stay tuned. Keep watching our videos. And like I said, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.